The book of Acts, chapter 25, verse 1, is where we begin our study today. And this is our 20th study in the book of Acts. One more to go after this. Father, we ask that you would add your blessing to the word that we're about to study. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> the, the Apostle Paul has been uh, falsely accused and has been sitting in a Roman jail for over two years because he's not been given justice and a fair trial. He's about to stand trial before a new Roman governor whose name is Festus. And it all came to pass because there were some religious leaders of the Jews who hated Paul because they hated Christianity. Let's begin reading in verse 1. Three days after arriving in the province, Festus went up from Caesarea to Jerusalem. Festus takes over for Felix as Roman governor, and he makes a trip to Jerusalem, which is where the religious leaders were. Verse 2, where the chief priests and the Jewish leaders appeared before him and presented the charges against Paul. They urgently requested Festus, as a favor to them, to have Paul transferred to Jerusalem, for they were preparing an ambush to kill him along the way. You see, governors, the Roman governors, liked to please the Jewish rulers because they could erupt riots at any moment. And so the Jews are using whatever leverage they have to try to get Festus to bring Paul to Jerusalem. With Festus as, as the new governor taking over for Felix, they saw an opportunity to send, set up another ambush. But they have to get Festus to move Paul across the country from Caesarea to Jerusalem. He's not cooperating. Instead, he says, I'm going to Paul over there. Verse 4. Festus answered, Paul is being held at Caesarea, and I myself am going there soon. Let some of your leaders come with me and press charges against the man there, if he has done anything wrong. And, uh, in other words, Festus says, you Jews who are accusing Paul, send someone with some authority along with me for the trial, and have it at Caesarea, where Paul has been confined for two years, by the way. Verse 6. After spending eight or ten days with them, he went down to Caesarea, and the next day he convened the court and ordered that Paul be brought before him. Paul's trial begins, and it's all about nothing. He shouldn't even be there. Verse 7. When Paul appeared, the Jews who had come down from Jerusalem stood around him, bringing many serious charges against him which they could not prove. So it was totally unfair here. And of course God never promised Paul or us a fair deal in this world. What he did promise is that he would use even the bad things to work together for our spiritual good and to fulfill his purpose. And believe it or not, God is using all this bad that is happening to Paul to bring about some good. And we're going to see some of that good very soon here. Verse 8, Then Paul made his defense. I have done nothing wrong against the law of the Jews, or against the temple, or against Caesar. Festus, wishing to do the Jews a favor, said to Paul, Are you willing to go up to Jerusalem and stand trial before me there on these charges? And so the Roman governor Festus has arrived to govern the Jews in this area and that Sanhedrin, that religious high court of the Jews was here and it would be politically smart to get on their good side and that is what the governor is trying to do at Paul's expense of course. How about shipping you back to Jerusalem? Because he knew that's what the Jews wanted. Verse 10, Paul answered I am now standing before Caesar's court where I ought to be tried I have not done any wrong to the Jews, as you yourself know very well. If, however, I am guilty of doing anything deserving death, I do not refuse to die. But if the charges brought against me by these Jews are not true, no one has the right to hand me over to them. I appeal to Caesar. He, has one, he wasn't found guilty of anything. He didn't plan on being handed over to the Jews. 
And he's getting sick and tired of being a stooge for these Roman governors who were constantly using him as a pawn trying to score points with the Jews. He's not going to do it anymore. 11. Again. He says, If, however, I am guilty of doing anything deserving death, I do not refuse to die. But if the charges brought against me by these Jews are not true, no one has the right to hand me over to them. I appeal to Caesar. Paul wanted a verdict. He wanted justice. There's no way in the world that he wanted to go back to Jerusalem. That would be walking right into the hands of those Jewish vigilantes. 12. After Festus had conferred with his council, he declared, You have appealed to Caesar. To Caesar you will go. And as a citizen of Rome, Paul could appeal to Caesar if he felt like he was being treated unfairly. Unfairly is an understatement. Their treatment of Paul was no less than shameful. And now they're talking about moving him back to Jerusalem for trial. Forget it. He appeals to Caesar. He's going to Rome, just as Jesus said he would. Verse 13. A few days later, King Agrippa and Bernice. Bernice was Agrippa's sister, known as the queen or as a princess. They arrived at Caesarea to pay their respects to Festus. Since they were spending many days there, Festus discussed Paul's case with the king. He said, There is a man here whom Felix left as a prisoner. When I went to Jerusalem, the chief priests and elders of the Jews brought charges against him and asked that he be condemned. Two years has not diminished the Jews' hatred of Paul or their desire to see him dead. Even after two years of Paul being in jail unfairly, the religious leaders still hate him and still want him dead. There are those who love themselves so much and are so immoral that they refuse to let their hatred of others go, no matter how much those other people may have suffered. Verse 16, I told them that it is not the Roman custom to hand over any man before he has faced his accusers and he has had an opportunity to defend himself against their charges. So you see, Rome had a pretty good system of justice. But like ours, it sometimes failed as it did in the case of Paul because of the sinners who operated it. 17. When they came here with me, I did not delay this, but convened the court the next day and ordered the man to be brought in. Festus wants the king to know that he did not avoid the Paul issue. He did his job. And, you know, most Roman governors didn't want to deal with any Jewish issues because, as I said, they could really erupt into a riot if they didn't like something. So, it would have been something to avoid, but he didn't. And it's best not to avoid unpleasant jobs, but just to get at them as soon as possible. 18. When his accusers got up to speak, they did not charge him with any of the crimes I had expected. In other words, the governor thought the Jews thought that the Jews were going to accuse Paul of breaking a Roman law. Instead, it was just about one of their religious laws. And of course, you know, the Romans, they didn't care about the Jewish religious laws. It didn't matter to them. Verse 19, instead, they had some points of dispute with him about their own religion and about a dead man named Jesus whom Paul claimed was alive. And boy, you can tell that Festus had no interest in spiritual things, certainly no interest in Christianity. He calls Jesus a dead man. And so, he didn't believe that Jesus was alive. He must have thought Paul was out of his mind. You know, preaching a dead man's religion. 20. I was at a loss to investigate uh, excuse me, I was at a loss how to investigate such matters. So I asked if he would be willing to go to Jerusalem and stand trial there on these charges. When Paul made his appeal to be held over for the emperor's decision, I ordered him and held until I could send him to Caesar. He says the only reason, governor says the only reason Paul is still here, king, is because I'm still making arrangements to send him to Rome. And so Paul is waiting. Paul was waiting to be sent to Rome, where he hopefully will get justice. 
just as he had waited two years to be released from this jail waiting for justice he's waiting and he continues to wait and those times of waiting can be very difficult times those times of waiting and maybe being ignored by other people who should not ignore you even those times as Ryan as they are they are still under the control of God and that is a good thing to remember verse 22 then Agrippa said to Festus I would like to hear this man myself he replied tomorrow you will hear him the next day Agrippa and Bernice came with great pomp and entered the audience room with the high-ranking officers and the leading men of the city at the command of Festus Paul was brought in and so many important people came to see the king and his sister and to watch the court proceedings with Paul this was a fancy get-together and a big show of power for Agrippa 24 Festus said King Agrippa and all who are present with us you see this man the whole Jewish community has petitioned me about him in Jerusalem and here in Caesarea shouting that he ought not to live any longer now Festus has only been in charge for a few days but it didn't take him long to figure out that the Jews hated Paul for whatever reason he couldn't figure out why and wanted him dead they wanted him dead executed the thing is the Jews have not convinced Festus that Paul deserves to die 25 I found he had done nothing deserving of death but because he made his appeal to the Roman or to the Emperor I decided to send him to Rome this is defending his decision to send Paul to Caesar rather than turn him over to the Jews see he's still trying to impress the king of the Jews here so-called and the Jewish religious leaders he's saying in essence my you know I can't please you he's, he's trying to save his own neck he's I can't please you I, I've got to obey the Emperor Paul requested it and as a Roman citizen he deserves the right to go to Caesar if he appeals 26 but I have nothing definite to write to his majesty about him therefore I have brought him before all of you and especially before you King Agrippa so that as a result of this investigation I may have something to write for I think it is unreasonable to send on a prisoner without specifying the charges against him in other words the governor says how can I send Paul to Caesar I'm going to because he's appealed but how can I send him to Caesar to be tried when I really haven't heard any charges against the man that would be of any interest to the Emperor I'm just going to be wasting the Emperor's time and it's probably not a very good idea to do that and so the governor is looking for help help me write a letter you know explain the charges against this man and he wants Agrippa to help him with this 26 verse 1 then Agrippa said to Paul you have permission to speak for yourself so Paul motioned with his hand and began his defense King Agrippa I consider myself fortunate to stand before you today as I make my defense against all the accusations of the Jews and especially so because you are well acquainted with all the Jewish customs and controversies therefore I beg you to listen to me patiently Paul was glad to tell his story to the king and that's because Agrippa understood Roman Jewish relations whereas Festus the governor did not and he hopes at last maybe to get a fair decision from Agrippa maybe he won't even have to go to Caesar verse 4 the Jews all know Paul continues the way I have lived ever since I was a child from the beginning of my life in my own country and also in Jerusalem and Paul is saying I was trained to be a good Jewish boy from the day I was born and all the Jews know that in other words I'm not a hater of the old Jewish religion as they are accusing me just not true check my background verse 5 they have known me for a long time and can testify.